Starship and booster testing have recommenced as Elon Musk works through the weekends to keep the program and the entire company afloat. Another Starlink flock migrates that way for the winter. Cargo Dragon is lifting off this month as well. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Wednesday, SpaceX engineers and technicians at Starbase Texas returned to testing their first orbital rated Starship, SN20. First filling up its liquid oxygen header tank in the nose, then the other lower tanks, creating some weird vintage, buddy. A little smoke oh. A static fire was expected, but appears to have been aborted just minutes from ignition. At the same time, a booster test tank, B2.1, underwent liquid nitrogen stress testing. The vessel is a mixture of both old booster and Starship parts, so its purpose is not entirely clear. Perhaps Wednesday's events were done in part to test out ground systems while filling an upper and lower stage at the same time, but that still would leave many more questions. The following day, however, another cryo test was done on the booster tank. It must have went well, since SpaceX extended the road closures an additional four hours and no pop was witnessed. A slew of closures for tests have been put in place for today and next weekend as well, so keep an eye on Lab Padre's channel to see what's happening in real time. RGV Aerial Photography snapped a neato shot of the launch tower this week. If you're not aware of what SpaceX is up to, well, they're going to use this beast to stabilize and supply the world's biggest rocket with fuel before liftoff. That's what the pad and upper arm is for anyway. The lower arms are then going to catch both parts of the world's biggest rocket during landing. Yeah, that's the world we live in. And this news just broke as I was editing this video. Elon Musk twatted that the construction of Starship Orbital Launch Pad at the Cape has begun. It will sprout out of Pad 39A. <laughs> Covers for the valuable quick disconnect parts of the pad have been painted for protection and slimming purposes. Elon likes pretty things. Speaking of which, crews have moved the next generation nose cone prototype out of the tent for Starship Gazer to gaze upon or oogle. Notice the sleek vertical panels, the, the ambiance of the welds. I give this lawn ornament four happy Elons and one frowny Elon <laughs> because its phallic-like shape is too masculine for postmodern art and represents the patriarchy. Now quick, somebody tear it down. Speaking of frowny face Elon, last Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, he sent an internal email to his employees at SpaceX informing them that if they don't step up their game with Raptor, the entire company could go bankrupt. I Declare bankruptcy! Quote, unfortunately, the Raptor production crisis is much worse than it had seemed a few weeks ago. As we have dug into the issues following the exiting of prior senior management, he's talking about Will Helsley here, they have unfortunately turned out to be far more severe than was reported. There is no way to sugarcoat this. I was going to take this weekend off as my first weekend off in a long time, but instead I will be on the Raptor line all night and through the weekend. Unless you have critical family matters or cannot physically return to Hawthorne, we will need all hands on deck to recover from what is, quite frankly, a disaster. The consequences for SpaceX if we cannot get enough reliable Raptors made is that we then can't fly Starship, which means we then can't fly Starlink Satellite Version 2. Falcon has neither the volume nor the mass to orbit needed for Satellite Version 2. Satellite Version 1 by itself is financially weak, while Version 2 is strong. In addition, we are spooling up terminal production to several million units per year, which will consume massive capital, assuming that satellite version 2 will be on orbit to handle the bandwidth demand. These terminals will be useless otherwise. What it comes down to is that we face a genuine risk of bankruptcy if we can't achieve a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks next year. Thanks, the Elon. So in a nutshell, SpaceX has invested a lot into their new iPad on a stick terminals, which require the new generation Starlink satellites to be useful. But Starship is required to put these larger satellites in orbit, which requires more Raptors to be made since that's the engine that runs the rocket. Raptors that are apparently struggling to come off the assembly line thanks to mismanagement by former management. But I wouldn't worry about SpaceX going bankrupt. First of all, as much as I would love to see Starship Super Heavy launch every other week next year, I've been around long enough since the start of the program to know that that's not going to happen. And yet still, SpaceX will not go bankrupt. The company, now worth over 100 billion, rare for a private business, keeps pulling in major cash from private investors and could always go public if they absolutely had to. And if they ever do, I'm ready for the lawyer wife to leave me for betting my life savings on them. All $420.69. Elon's been in tight situations before, especially with Tesla. 
He's obviously a very experienced and successful CEO. You know, he kind of is the world's richest man. He just has this habit of lighting fires under the feet of his employees to get them to move, which is what I believe this was. Everyone knows working for him while rewarding is no vacation. And people get that, which is why they still choose to work for him void of Leechy unions to boot. The Musk man has since said things are looking better already with the Raptor line, but if a severe global recession were to dry up capital availability and liquidity while SpaceX was losing billions on Starlink and Starship, then bankruptcy, while still unlikely, is not impossible. Only the paranoid survive, which would make for a great plug for my sponsor, My Patriot Supply. Link in the description, but I'll save it for another week. See, I don't like talking politics in these episodes, but even Elon acknowledges that it's important to pay attention to what the country is doing because it affects everyone and everything, including SpaceX. Like in this case, how much money the Federal Reserve is printing, driving inflation up and bringing us all closer to global Armageddon. All these people here are doomed. You're doomed! <laughs> Last night, SpaceX launched a flock of 48 version 1.5 Starlink satellites and two Black Sky sats to orbit, lifting off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Greg, Scott with another radtastic capture of the event. The two hitchhikers were deployed about an hour later, followed by the other 48 30 minutes after that. This was the ninth flight for this booster, landing at sea on the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. As the 27th mission, it broke the Falcon record for most launches in a given year and marked the 101st consecutively successful mission to orbit. But it ain't over yet. December is scheduled to be chock full of SpaceX activities at the Cape. From Falcon 9's launch of NASA's Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer on December 9th to CRS-24, the next Cargo Dragon resupply mission to the International Space Station on December 21st. An EVA at the ISS had to be postponed this week due to those pesky clouds of Russia debris created with their recent missile test. Elon said they too had to shift some Starlink satellite orbits to reduce probability of collision. Not great, but not terrible either. The space station and dragons that dock to them have micrometeorite shields, but EVA suits do not, hence higher risk for spacewalks. Elon's recently toyed with the idea of SpaceX making these suits better and cheaper on NASA's behalf. And lastly, Inspiration4 crew member Haley has officially joined the SpaceX medical team, but will continue to work her dream job at St. Jude. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Yesterday, Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck updated everyone on the designs of their newest launch vehicle, Neutron, taking a few light jabs at Starship in the process, but you know, that's to be expected with competing ways of engineering things. Neutron will be made out of a custom carbon composite recipe cooked up in-house and laid down by 3D printers, which will allow the rocket to withstand a launch tower falling over onto it, I guess. The booster of the two-stage orbital rocket is fully reusable. Seven Archimedes engines will lift the vehicle off the pad, after stage separation, using a Hungry Hippo type deployment design that makes the fairings reusable, the first stage will perform a boost back burn and land at the launch site. No recovery ships required. However, at this time, the second stage is expendable. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for checking in. Shout out to those of you supporting the show via one of the links in the description below. Have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>